We're back. Good evening, Chaim Rivlin. Good evening. Chaim, in your investigation these past weeks, you found that plastic baby bottles and pacifiers are not as innocent as they seem. Right, Arla. We started receiving more and more testimony from parents regarding early puberty in their children. We started to investigate and found additional phenomena causing concern in recent years, linked by researchers to a hormonal epidemic. We chose to investigate pollutants found in baby bottles where their effect can be irreversible. One last word, Arla. We spoke to many researchers and doctors, interviewing some of the greatest Israeli and international specialists, and I have to point out that not all of these specialists agree with the research and the conclusions that you'll see in our report. Here's the story. The first time I noticed something was wrong was when the child was six years old. She suddenly said, you know, this girl is like me, and this girl, and this girl has the symptoms. I've been observing child development for many years, and we can clearly see that they are reaching puberty at an earlier age. When Professor Tzvi Sadiq began collecting data for research on sexual puberty in children 30 years ago, these early signs of puberty were virtually non-existent. The recent data portrays a troublesome picture that occupies researchers around the world. The rate of girls who have developed budding breasts by the age of eight has increased by a factor of 25 in recent years, while the rate of girls who have begun menstruating by the age of 11 has doubled. It could be said that it's a result of better nutrition or because of a decrease in disease, but the logic of nature is that it's nature's objective to multiply and to prepare the next generation. If nature is given better conditions, then it occurs earlier. Up till now, it's been all right. When the data began flowing in, it became clear that nature was not responsible for these changes. In recent decades, there has been a dramatic decrease in male fertility. According to various studies, male sperm count has decreased by 50 percent. This is apparent in more and more sperm samplings, which show deficiencies and mutations not seen previously. Simultaneously, we can see an increase in male genital deficiencies and in prostate cancer. That means something has been disrupted and people began looking for the cause. The first lead was obtained by accident, in a sort of work accident, in Professor Anna Soto's laboratory in Boston. She found that the plastic dishes she used secreted a substance that imitated the action of the female hormone estrogen. Tissue she was examining that should not have contained the estrogen hormone did. The first chapter in the detective story that ends in all of our homes began to unfold. We contacted the company, they didn't know why. They sent us several batches of tubes. And so finally we could trace it to them, to one batch. And uh, it turned out that uh, the uh, manufacturers had changed the uh, composition of the plastic. So we asked what was there, and they said trade secret. The trade secret was discovered a short while later. It appears that several chemicals used in the plastic industry contain sex hormones that disrupt our body systems, causing everything from puberty to breast cancer and from disruption of fertility to prostate cancer. We found irregularities in several patients, hormones that shouldn't have been there. These chemicals enter the cells and behave like natural hormones. When it comes at the wrong age or in incorrect quantities, internal balance is violated and the problems begin. It's like a virus that attacks a computer. They obstruct transfer of information. That means they either disrupt the message or obstruct it completely or cause excessive hormone secretion. Where do these pseudo-hormones, these synthetic chemicals, come from? They're found in various cosmetic applications, pesticides, medicines, and mainly in plastics for packaging food and beverages. And yes, where you would least expect them, in baby bottles and in toys that babies put in their mouths, like pacifiers and bathtub ducks. This is of great concern to me. My grandchildren drink from these bottles. I, I told my children, my family, not to buy these bottles anymore. 
Most of these bottles are made of polycarbonate. It's a plastic that contains the hormone-disrupting chemical bisphenol A. It's here, bisphenol A. Yes. It's a chemical that's been synthesized for 30 years as a medication for women, but found its way into the plastic industry after being found to possess vital characteristics. Unfortunately, polycarbonate is not very stable, which leads to it breaking down over time. Even in absolutely new polycarbonate, there is some bisphenol A leaching. But in old baby bottles and old polycarbonate products, the rate of leaching gets higher and higher and higher the more the product is used. So they become more and more dangerous because they expose the baby to higher and higher levels of what we now know to be a, a chemical that babies should not be exposed to. Bisphenol A released from the bottles has been shown to imitate sex hormones. In experiments on mice, Professor Vamsal found that even in small quantities it causes a series of severe hormonal disturbances as well as an increase in the likelihood of contracting cancer. When during development, and this would also be in the newborn period, you expose babies to bisphenol A, you permanently damage the testes and for the rest of that individual's life. Baby bottles leak very significant quantities, small but significant, at least to laboratory animals. Every parent disinfects the bottles at least once a day. Every mother knows that the best sterilization method is boiling water after a thorough scrub with abrasive materials. This will definitely release the harmful chemical. At the very least, I conclude that bottles should be disposed of once they begin to get old or have undergone many sterilization cycles. Professor Mimouni, head of Ichalav Hospital's incubator ward and also a member of the Ministry of Health Committee on Nutrition of Premature Babies, will shortly be releasing a similar recommendation to all his colleagues. The question is, why doesn't the Ministry of Health issue a similar warning to the general public? It appears that a warning was issued several years ago, but was done very swiftly. The Ministry's response to a reporter's question was that they recommended disposing of the bottles when they're worn out, murky, or scratched. They also recommended using new bottles for every baby. That is their statement. No explanation when or why the bottle should be replaced. But they haven't initiated the publication of the recommendation anywhere. Have you heard of a recommendation like that? No. 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 The information the Ministry of Health is trying to conceal has already been made public by members of the European community. A year ago, they agreed on a strict standard regarding the release of the chemical bisphenol A from baby bottles. According to the new standard, which Israel is planning to adopt this year, a new bottle will not be allowed to release more than a certain minuscule amount of the chemical. But this professional definition turns out to be problematic. There is no safe amount. That's why one part in a million, or one part in a billion, or one part in a trillion has no significance. As I've already stated, theoretically, one molecule is enough to create a cancer cell. This subject comes up for discussion every now and then. I imagine in a relatively short time, in Israel as well, use of these substances will be prohibited, or at least curtailed, but not yet. If this substance is dangerous, or if it's thought to be dangerous, the public should be told now to allow us to consider our options to purchase or not to purchase the product. I don't understand why these things should be postponed. In these instances, action must be immediate.